G'day, Wait. mates. Oh. Welcome to Baby Beard Media. We're an Australian podcast, so if you support us, you support Australian jobs. So support us. Put a podcast on, on your Barbie. So where the bloody hell are ya? That was New Zealand. That was a bit. <laughs> 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 All right, well, that was a bad suggestion. <laughs> Shut up and take my podcast. <laughs> I'm not ready to start. Hooray. Hey, everybody, hey, just everybody. shut up and take my podcast. The Futurama podcast where we look at every episode of Futurama chronologically from the beginning all the way to the end until it stops. I nearly screwed that up. <laughs> Woo, we're up to episode 11, guys. Hey. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, again, they're yeah. taking along. Mars University. We're still in season one. I, if, you, if you disagree, go back to the last episode. <laughs> I explain this. We're in episode 11. Well, season one. Brett Harlan from I Roommate was right. the director. So he directed ah. I Roommate. And then we got Jay Stewart Burns, who wrote My Three Sons. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Air date, October 3rd, 1999. The only person we really introduce who, to my recollection, doesn't come back is Gunter. Um, and do we see any of the members of Robot House ever I again? think Fatbot. I feel, fat, we see fat I feel like Fatbot comes in. We've got Fatbot, Gearshift, and Oily. Oily. Yeah. Fatbot, I think, comes back. Yeah, I, I swear I see somewhere. him somewhere. somewhere. Maybe when yeah. they go back to university. Like they, they go back to Mars. They yeah. do go back to Mars. And yeah, and he probably yeah. comes back to Earth. Who knows? Yeah. I think he's around as like a featured extra. Yeah, yeah. I can guarantee he's probably in the in the one where the the robots are being going to be destroyed. Oh yeah, where they all yeah blast when they need every the robot. Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. totally. Um, plot, uh, plot it out. The plot Plotticus. is um, the gang go to Mars University. Fry has to dorm with a gen- not a genetically enhanced a monkey with a hat that makes him Mon- smart. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> and, genetic. Um, oh, no, Engineered hat, an engineered hat with a with a monkey attached. Mm-hmm. Um, hijinks ensue while Bender um, basically reinvigorates his old fraternity, which have been taken over by nerds, and yep. they basically play off the movie Animal House, National Lampoon's Animal House, back in the day. Yeah. So I'll I'll go straight up and saying I know this was Animal House when I saw it. Never seen Animal House. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to double down on that. Never seen Animal House. But did you know it was Animal House? Yep. Yeah, because yeah. it's just so culturally ingrained. Yeah. Even just the song at the end. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, that's Animal House. I know they've got the exact song that was in Animal House. Yeah, it's the same one where during the Togo party, I yeah. believe. Yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that, where they a have lot the, of their budget went. They have the final shot. Like those those clips at the end, like the yeah. This, yes. is, this is what yeah. they did. The now. freeze frame, even and like then, the the parade at the end. It's yeah. um them going against the dean. It's yep. um Dean when, Vernon, who is the last name of the actor who played the dean in yeah. Animal House. Um, right. When they've got the ladder up and um they're staring through the window. Yep. Um, they're, sh- they're perving, and when it falls back, although in that yep. Lampoon, what about the race? Is the race? Do they there do some sort of race? There is no race. Okay. Uh, that's that's my only problem with this episode. Or is that Revenge of the Nerds? That might be Revenge of the maybe, Nerds. Because I know there's them. Revenge of the Nerds homage in here as well. Uh, we also got Goodwill Hunting. Yep. yep. Little, yep. Little, little, which is one of my favourite. I love Goodwill Hunting. That's such a, yeah, so such a great much. film. To be fair, um, I will blame uh, Jay and Silent Bob straight back because in that they're making Goodwill Hunting 2 hunting season what? and um, when I was a kid wait I, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon are involved with Jay and Silent Bob are they in it yeah they're in it yes because um, <laughs> they're making Good Good Hunting too. when I I had seen that movie before as a kid before I had seen Good Hunting oh, right. and I assumed Good Hunting for years was about hunting <laughs> oh, that like no. it wasn't goodwill hunting it was like you sh- you've got goodwill for hunting, for hunting. <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 and like i blame jay and silent bob for that well it's like you know is there a pineapple in pineapple express P- I, I in the movie pineapple express yeah i only think of that because they um in um this is the end yeah, yeah, yeah. The end. um like they talk they like try and make pineapple express 2 yeah, while they're yeah. high Getting away, I've never seen Pineapple Express. Pineapple Express, the Pineapple Express in Pineapple Express is a drug, is a strain of weed. All right, well, that's something completely different then. Yeah. Yeah, though, oddly enough, I thought the the strain of weed that they were using was from Hawaii, and I don't really associate pineapples to be Hawaiian. Yeah, pineapples are Hawaiian. Yeah. Are they Hawaiian? Yeah, tropical, yeah. man. Yeah, I know, they're tropical tro- I know they're tropical, but like. What, what's um, on a Hawaiian pizza? That's a good ham. point. Ham and pineapple. Okay, I've been proven wrong. I, I didn't see a pineapple when I saw Moana. So That's a good point. <laughs> I saw I, coconut. I, I, yeah. I, coconut Express. I coconut went, Express. I went to Hawaii. I can verify there are pineapples. Per pineapple, can confirm. But pineapple, can confirm. Pineapple to coconut ro- ratio. Pineapple to human ratio. <laughs> like a lot more. Uh, 
So, Animal House. <laughs> yes, yeah, back, to it's back on to where we're at. Uh, what do we think, guys? Hey, are, are, uh, uh, to Chris. See, Chris, Chris doesn't like episodes that don't develop characters a lot. No, I don't like char- I don't like episodes <laughs> that don't take become their own episodes that are just riffing on something already established. Are you annoyed that we saw two in a row? Yeah, um, <laughs> pretty here's, annoying. Here's the interesting thing: is that when I when I did my initial viewing for Flight to Remember, did, I kind of enjoyed it a bit, and then when I did my viewings after that, didn't really like it. I kind of enjoyed it with this episode. The first time I watched it in prep for this, did not enjoy it. Enjoy what it about really like it. what about your second time viewing? I found myself laughing more. Okay, um, which is interesting because as I stated last week, these kind of episodes I don't particularly enjoy. What I I found I didn't like most was the Bender subplot. I I just didn't I didn't enjoy the the side of the episode that uh, veered more towards Animal House. I don't mind that because I think I've because I've seen it. There's a like again nostalgia around mm. it. Yeah, uh, sure. I think if you've seen something, you would just say if you if you love Titanic, you would have loved the last episode. Yeah, but if you love Animal House, you would just tend to more lean towards yeah. this episode. I found a lot of the jokes, the quips this time around I was laughing a lot more at. There was I a lot of enjoyed, good stuff in there. I enjoyed Fatbot, Fatbot a lot more than I did um, really? on the first viewing. I will say, like, um, the thing I love about this episode is um, facial expressions of a lot of characters. Mm-hmm. Um, the way Fry um, plays with Gunter and, like, his, like, angry face where he always, he's always squinting at him. He's done mm-hmm. it a few times. Mm-hmm. Um, the start of the Fry squint. Yeah, so there's a fry squid where it's like it's slow eyebrows in. Yeah. <laughs> Fatbot's expression whenever he's eating a painting. Yeah, the the, the kind of yeah, both it's sadness and worry. Not and the not the him doing it like as a joke, but his expression. Yeah. That's what yep. I like about it. And um, at the end, Dean as he ha- he's having to lead the parade, he's like oh. he's almost frozen in anger yeah. um, face. Totally. I enjoyed crazy. Like I enjoyed we're veering more. We're double downing on crazy fans work yes. now. I'm Farnsworth really starting to funny. enjoy this Farnsworth. He's, yeah, Farnsworth is like a highlight in this episode. Yeah, yeah, Farnsworth is probably my favorite character in this episode. I really like Farnsworth being crazy and shooting the monkey in the crate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. At, at the opening, that's like a really Farnsworth. To a T, mm. or like he whips out a grenade. Which yeah. So it's like yeah. I'm just like, oh my god, he moved it. He moved yeah, I was so gonna fast. Say, that's the nimblest <laughs> yeah. he's ever been. Like he's he's bombing animals. He's shocking Fry on several occasions. Uh, he's I shooting a monkey. Yeah. He's wishing that he broke the monkey's legs. Yeah. He's going all out. He yeah. wants to eat the monkey. Why? Why? Why, Why didn't, didn't I break, break his, his legs? legs? I just like even like that's a great joke. But I love like even when they rock up, it's like a lot like it's like oh, Mars used to be a lot like Utah. But now it's like, I was really expecting a New Jersey joke. <laughs> I know, but uh, I guess like you got to go with like barren um, wasteland. Wasteland, yeah, yeah, yeah. like um, Utah, mm, you barren I, wasteland. <laughs> I enjoy the bits we have of Leela as well. I love how they're they're going more to a character trait of um. Look, I'm staying out of this. Okay, here's what you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I dislike that actually. Oh, it's yeah, it's that it's been set up. Me. It's been set up quite a lot. She's got this thing of, especially in I roommate. Like we go back and oh, look. Okay. I'm not going to tell you what to do. It's like you've been doing that for two weeks. Yeah, yeah. you've been doing nothing but she, meddling. She, she likes to, likes to meddle and be in yeah. charge because end of the day she knows what's right around all these idiots. Yes, yeah. And she like tries to not be that person, but yeah. she has she just she has, has to, to be that person. Say. Otherwise, there'd be no rational like ending. <laughs> um, let's veer towards Chris. Um, I really dislike Gunter. I agree. As as a character, which mm. makes the whole episode for me really hard to access. Gunter's kind of the protagonist, or at least not necessarily the protagonist. He's certainly one of the main characters, and he's supposed to be a character we sympathise with. Mm. Really? Um, yeah, I think uh, so. Because I don't. No, that's no. exactly what yeah. I'm about to say as well. Yeah. I don't sympathise with him. I understand his kind of... I get it, like, if you're a smart character or a smart person, like, life is, like... You know, you do have expectations. That's a sympathetic narrative. It's a sympathetic kind of idea. You know, we have all like it's a tough thing because like we've been viewing Futurama through Fry. We we it's you can't really sympathise with Fry's enemy for this episode, and also because Fry doesn't do anything to justify the animosity that Good has at the beginning. Like Good is just a straight out dick Dick. to Fry from the opening, and then Fry becomes antagonistic later. Like for example, when he lets the parents freeze, they can run amok and ruin everything. Usually it'd be like that's a dick move, but at the same time I'm going, you're just retaliating. Yeah, like retaliation. Yeah. It was kind of justified in a way. 
Yeah, I don't get why Fry. Um, I don't know who the protagonist of this episode is. Yeah, who, I, yeah. I don't know who the protagonist is. That's why I kind of like. That's why I really enjoy the uh, the Animal House narrative. That, that's that's really... what I enjoy more, and I wish they had focused on it. Yeah, same. It's clearer. I feel and like it's, it's easier to view. It's another case of they were going to parody something, but they didn't do it enough. Yeah, and they didn't deconstruct it. Enough. Yeah, I, I would have really loved the deconstruction of the Animal yeah. House like universe. If it had been like Animal House loses hard because they stuffed around like and actually like they lost really hard yeah. and it wasn't just like uh because this isn't this isn't a parody of yeah this of is another homage this is another homage <laughs> yeah. it's another thing where it's just very clear moments from the movie yeah bender with the beer can against his head yeah and seeing the women and the up yeah. the ladder doing the, the, doing the just, panty yeah, raid yeah, yeah. you're yeah. just hitting moments yep. yeah you're tweaking them slightly to be like yeah. oh he's looking at a modem instead yeah, exactly. it's, it's, all they're doing is saying this is exactly animal house but look it's robots exactly yeah. it's Robots and that's it. not interesting. It would be interesting if we had Bender go to Animal House, cause mischief and mayhem, and then all the students fail, right? And, and it's like, Animal House, what a terrible solution. You know, like, <laughs> that's, that's like, that would have been good. Or Fry, like, has seen Animal House. Yeah. If he's seen as like, yeah. you know what works? Because Fry gets so much of his solutions and the way he perceives the world from TV. Yeah. From movies. So it's like, and then when things don't work, like even if he like gives Bender advice. Yeah. yeah. For example. And Bender goes and does this stuff and it just goes horribly wrong. And it's goes, like, oh. it's like, it worked in Animal House. Yeah. It it's yeah, like, exactly. why would TV lie to me? Yeah. <laughs> um, or, or we go to, um, or we just follow the Gunter story hmm. and we don't have the side plot of Bender. They are, they, like, <laughs> done, done correctly, they are strong enough to hold on yeah. their own. And as like I, a story I agree the two narratives work it's just that in the Gunter Fry thing who are you rooting for yeah it's tough like because we we understand Fry as this sympathetic character he's set up as the college dropout and he sucks at even that he sucks at being a college dropout and then we have on top of that this other character who we have a sympathetic narrative towards yeah and even from the beginning we know that he's a character we're supposed to be kind of sympathetic towards as well yeah but it doesn't help that like you can't write someone we well, like you can but it's hard because they wrote him like a dick it's hard facing in... our protagonist so you've already like backed everyone into a corner yeah, it's yeah. harder writing that in 10 minutes yeah you're yeah. talking about the Gunda storyline it'd be interesting to see how they would have changed it if they're going with their original idea or one of their original scripts which was to not be Gunter it was to be a character that gets introduced later which is Farnsworth clone yeah Cubit Cu- yeah. yeah. that was one initial idea of what person was going to be in the yeah. crate um, and have a Cubit versus Fry similar story. personalities well, I, I, yeah I believe yeah. it's the same voice actor you yes. might be right and it makes sense to me if it's Cubit I think it's Tress mm. McNeil okay but yeah that to me makes sense and would probably be better honestly um Gunter is only one only appears in this episode, basically. I believe so. Pretty sure. And we get a little, we get another, we oh, another I think he standard, standard fox joke yeah. that happens with every fox animated show, actually. <laughs> yeah. Fox has a hard time. Nah, it's well, like, I wonder um, if they bring it on themselves. <laughs> no, they're, they're a lovely bunch of people. I'm sure. Don't sue us. <laughs> yeah, don't sue us. <laughs> um, Chris, favourite moments or moments you enjoyed? I really enjoyed Farnsworth's made up subject. What was it? I can't remember no, what, quite what no it was. But no one will take it. That's but no why. one will take it. Um, I'm and what Fry has, like read it as. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a professor, not a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was very that was funny. Good, yes. um, Which is so much more beautiful when you think about the fact that these writers and these animators come from heavily academic backgrounds exactly. so just like a little jab mm. um i enjoyed bender i enjoyed the kind of animal house setting i yes. thought that was really kind of nice i thought it was really nostalgic i thought it was kind of bender kind fits of in beautiful in that setting yeah bender fits in really nicely and i would have liked to spend an entire episode there oh definitely um with bender as the protagonist so another time like bender should have been the protagonist as well as last episode. Yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah. I think. Because um, this doesn't really expand on Fry. Um, but favourite moment, definitely Farnsworth. Why, why, why didn't I break his legs? Yeah, that was... And his his de- his decision to eat the monkey <laughs> at <Yeah>. the end. <laughs> that, that was great. Was letting him go to waste. Yeah. Um, just Chris said, all the Farnsworth stuff, was it, he's, he's such a highlight in this episode. Um, like I said earlier... All the expressions actors would have give. Yeah. Like Fry's little just like angry Fry's glancing. Um, I did like when Fry walks into the um his dorm and he's like, Yeah, two computers, like two beds. Du-du-du. Woodpecker. And a woodpecker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like just such a stupid joy of it. Oh god, it, it's great. Yeah, like overall I like the episode. I wish it was just Animal House. If I have a problem with any any part of it, I would say apart from the Gunter stuff, I would just 
I would cut the boat race. Yeah. I it kind of came out of left field for me. It's like, oh, you do this, and then I have to forgive Animal House. Oh, like, I didn't yeah. mind that. Yeah. The, well, robot. The, the thing is, is that when I saw it, because I haven't seen Animal House or those kind of you know early eighties comedies, National Lampoon yeah, sort yeah. of deal, I just assumed it was another homage to the film. Ah. So I just saw it as, oh yeah, they're just doing like this is how we settle things in these movies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's a it is a classic trope of like yes. the the university hijinks movies have those end of like the laugh ha- last half of the or last quarter of the film is dedicated to a competition yeah mm. um you see even like in in the more recent those sorts of movies um the like American, Neighbors and American Pie, the, whatever that version, they did one at university and it's the whole end of the movie. Beta House. Beta House. They do like a whole thing of like... <laughs> Why do I know that? <laughs> uh, they do a whole thing. I've seen the movie. Competitions at the end. Van like, Wilder? Or is yeah. it like that, that same kind yeah, of thing? Same sort of thing. Oh, it might be Naked Mile. It There's all, so many American It all started Pie with like Animal House, basically. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Revenge of the Nerds has yeah. that whole yeah. sort of... There are competitions. So it's in fitting with the setting. Yeah. I just... Yeah. It does come a bit out of left field i don't mind it too much but i, I, I understand do, I why i don't mind it but i just i understand uh, why you wouldn't yeah wouldn't jam wouldn't yeah. jam on it if i'm just, if i'm just watching animal house parody you just just parody animal yeah. house well, exactly that's kind of that's kind of <laughs> what i'm saying it's like is this isn't their own yeah you know they haven't made it their own yeah it's just another ripoff yeah and that's probably why animal house didn't jive with me in this episode Mm. because I just felt it was going moment to moment and so I'm not caring about it because I'm just looking at it going this just feels like you're taking moments from the movie yeah which you go with what you said that like they they get Fry to help do Animal House basically and they fail with everything yeah I think I would have enjoyed that because you're 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 subverting in a way going this actually doesn't work yeah you do this TV (laughs) isn't real life yeah, exactly, yeah. and yeah. like that's that's very like um like a running theme for all of mm. Nate Granny's work that like mm. TV is not a solution, but yeah, everyone and, acts as if it is, and yeah. in, and inver- and subverting your original kind of the idea that Fry sets out to become a a, a college dropout kind of bothers me at the very really? beginning. I mean, I get it. Like, I understand the joke. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> I'm not an idiot, guys. But it's, it's just like, why why set out with that mission? Other than Fry's an idiot. Yeah. It's very easy because he could just start one day and drop out and he's done. Yeah. Why doesn't he set out to do something? To be like, why not? At the end of the episode, he's like, why not have it start out and go... I'm gonna I'm gonna do one better. I'm gonna finish college. Yeah. And at the end of it, Farnsworth comes in with that line. Well, according apparently, Fry, even though you dropped out, you're actually better than a dropout from university back in the 20th century. So you're actually a better dropout than you were. That's a funnier payoff than mm. having all of it bunched up at the start. Yeah. With mm. no narrative arc. Or if he just had something to do with Bender. Yeah. And it was like a Bender Fry story. Yeah. I'm happy. Because I mean, that. it is really, mm. or at least it should be. It should be. And we get. We're both going to university together. Why split them up? Yeah, they, they they would be very in sync in an Animal House type episode. Totally. Um, that or we just cut down on the amount of time Benders in the episode. Yeah, you got to pick which way you're going to go. I I didn't so much mind Fry's plot in that. That, but that being said, I think it's another case of. Yeah, one or the other. The Bender Animal House storyline, or let's hit a Fry storyline. Like yeah. you don't, you don't need both. Mm. And in this kind of episode, because you are focusing half of your episode on an homage, which yeah. is just an homage, it just doesn't, it just doesn't click. Yeah, and I think the failing of that homage is that we we know it's an homage from the, from from the from the very beginning, from the opening minute. We're like, ah, oh, it's an homage to Animal House. Yeah, it's like, for people that haven't even seen it. Yeah, and because it's such rich cultural kind of like currency. We're like, oh, we know what's going to happen. So like they're gonna they're gonna get the dean. They're gonna win the day. Yeah, they won't graduate, but in a way, they still win. And he'll yell, "Robot House!" Yeah. It's like, yeah, you did the thing from the thing. It's like, oh, there's the snooty house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like very get... on the nose, yeah. homage. It's just yeah. super. It's like it's not Futurama can do subtle well. Yeah, we know they can, yeah. and it's, I don't think we're ripping into this unfairly because it it does have good moments. Even though we're d- nitpicking and delving into it quite closely, overall you seen James you seem to enjoy it more yeah I, overall I, your initial I, reaction you I didn't seem to enjoy it I as find much it's, I find it has some great jokes in it your initial oh yeah oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I I mean I still like the episode I'd still watch it over other TV shows oh yeah, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. like let's not mislead our leaders and be like our, our leaders our listeners and be like you know we were doing a podcast on Futurama because we freaking love it not because we hate it yeah because this is the thing where I, i've been watching the past couple of episodes and i've been coming to that pretty obvious conclusion which is these are so digestible like you yeah. can just you could just sit back and just watch them 
Yeah. Which I've been like, I've had like with my initial viewings, I just go, okay, I'm just going to just, just watch. Just, you can actually just switch your mind off and watch as well. They're very easily digestible. And then there's layers upon layers as well. Yeah. Mm. Because you have all these social references. You have the Easter eggs. You have political commentaries. You have the little animation jokes that are in there just for the animators. You've got all the good things. A lot of these references still hold up yeah. there are a few that don't I will say um, we did get a Homer and Bart cameo yeah we did this, yeah. yeah a Coney, very very Coney. obvious one yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, Coney what, Island yeah. what I love about Futurama references to Simpsons as opposed to something like the Simpsons referencing King of the Hill Bart's doing Gridiron yeah and they're and actually part of the world they're actually part of the world and this we're saying Simpsons was a TV show yes. Futurama's real Yeah. so I can dig it <laughs> like you know we've had the doll of Bart on the comet yeah, yeah, that was coming, and I'm looking at these, going, yeah, cool, I'm happy with that. Do we need to do a competition versus um, hell? Hell is other robots. Hell, hell is other robots. Is other wins, yeah, robots. Think, yeah. Yep, That's wins out, way. wins out, absolutely. Frank Castellano still takes the title. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Dan Castellano. Oh, far out. Dan, sorry, Dan. Uh, and then we need to do a voice. Yeah, voice. let's let's try a bit of Gunter because oh, this is okay. a, this is a completely different quality that we haven't gone into yet. Um, sure. Hi guys, I'm Gunter. Because it's Tress McNeil as well, and Tress mm-hmm. is very because it's a female doing a male voice. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll give it a shot. Oh shoot! Uh, I try to put a hat on my butt. <laughs> Eureka! The hat goes on the head. It's so obvious. <laughs> it's it's all so clear now. <laughs> um, that's about as much as as close oh, as yeah, I'm going to get. I think. Tough. Hey Fry! You say you like bananas? How do you like these bananas? What? <laughs> <laughs> you got a bit SpongeBobby there, mate. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> so zany. <laughs> Jellyfishing. Uh, Scary stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon that's about. Yeah. Um, yeah well, until next time. Until next. Well, what moving, we got what we got next week. Moving forward, we got when aliens attack. Woohoo! Nice. Um, but until then, I have been Sean and I've been James and I've been Chris. I just had a mouthful of drink. I was going to say, let's I, go. I panicked. I, I panicked. Really panicked. Well, I've been Chris. Because I'm just not going to... Like, I can't fix that in post. Yeah. It just can't be done. I don't know what an edit is. What? It feels so sad. You just have to upload this exactly Just from start to finish. Just start to finish, ruined yeah. everything. Yeah. This is live stream. Fuck. Live stream would be a scary thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know one of, one of the best, like, some jokes. Yep. It is the, um... It's like, um, does this go out live? No, it puts a terrible strain on the animator's yeah. wrist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's just so good. Uh, Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. See ya, listeners. We love you. Jesus. (laughs) What? See ya. You don't even know this. Bye. Yeah. I'll say I love you so they don't feel bad. I'll tell tell them I love them. Bye, listeners. I love you. Oh, that's sweet. Have a lot of Soylent Green. Soylent Green. That's made from people. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) No, 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 listener. Oh, listener. No, 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 listener. 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 Batman. I love the listener. And then we end up doing like South Park and. I was a mess on Fear Bolt Planet. I was looking at myself and I'm like, what did I even say? What did I even say? I wasn't. Let's pitch I film. I film. I film. It'll occur. Oh, Christ. I film. I can use from now on. That's hard. It's hard coming up with um euphemisms. Euphemisms. Yeah, I am. I'm like. Say my name. Heisenberg. Yeah, Aaron Paul. They were asking him, "What do you get stopped by most for on um like on the street? Like, what do fans?" And he's like, "Everyone just wants me to call them a bitch." He had two Gatorades in his hand. He was walking oh, down yeah, the street. He's like, Gatorade me, bitch! And he, <laughs> and he threw the other guy the Gatorade. And he's like, I don't know why oh, I did my Gatorade. <laughs>